Go ahead and read the uh, engine run-up checklist, please. Nose wheel centered. There it is, centered. Flight controls. Check. Bring that mixture back. We've got a rise in EGT. Final clear. Final is clear. Okay, engine instruments all checked. We're rolling. Airspeed is alive. 70, 80. We're airborne. Gear coming up. Holding 80. Holding 80. You got the airfield out there? I have it. Would you like a checklist or no? Yeah, give me a checklist. Okay, power. Mixtures. Mixtures are full rich. Fuel control. Uh, I've got everything set on mains and pumps are on. Everybody got their seatbelt on? Yes, ma'am. Fuel selectors. They're on both. Okay, final is clear. Final is clear. Slide back. Huh? Oh, yeah. You want to do me a favor? Catch the door for us, okay? I will. Okay, thanks a lot. Take care. After the test flight, Phil and his passengers flew to Sky Bryce, arriving with plenty of time for lunch and a brief condo inspection tour. We join them as they prepare to fly home. Thanks, you guys Colin. will be back in just a second, right? Sounds good to me. Okay, thank you. Bye. Okay, that's done. We got it fly on. All right, awesome. Hey, you know, why don't we split the uh, pre-flight? You do that side. I'll do this side. Well, you know, I'd like to do that, but uh, I'm qualified in the airplane, so it's got to kind of be my pre-flight, right? All oh, right, you don't trust me. No, it's not about trust. It's not about trust at all. You know what it is? It's about qualifications. If you were the crew and crewing, I would trust you 100% in those little skinny boats. But with the airplane, I got to do it. But all you know right, what? Double, <laughs> not, double check is everything. So do me a favor. Why don't you fall in behind me? You go ahead and get the uh, flaps, okay? Okay. And pump those down, and then we'll walk through it together. How's all right, that? sounds good. All right. Flaps are coming down. Good job. All right. All right, flaps full. Let's get our airlines a nice check. What's it show? Uh, it's just below six. Oh. I'll get the oil on this side. Hey, uh, Dad, we got an oil streak right there on the... Uh... You know what? This is not too bad. Uh, we just fill it up with oil, and it's normal that we get a little bit of oil spillage. So I say so. All right. Yeah, I think it's fine. Runs again. Now, isn't that better doing it by yourself? Yeah, if you say so. Hey, ladies, y'all ready to go? It's time to get out of this place. Okay, pre flight inspection is complete. Clear left. Clear left. We're airborne, gear coming up. Gears up. Okay, confirm left engine. Confirm left engine dead. Oh my left God. engine. Feathered. Feathered. Okay, get out the checklist. Let's go through the checklist real quick. Okay, we're holding good. I've got 110 knots confirmed. Another short segment, but there was certainly a lot going on and a lot to talk about. Let's start with what went well. Phil takes his pilot and command responsibility very seriously, and he understands that two people working independently to accomplish one task creates an opportunity for something to be missed. That's why he doesn't accept Junior's suggestion to share pre-flight inspection duties. He's glad to do the walk around together, though. Phil and Junior notice some oil accumulation during the inspection. Phil explains that there's always a little oil to be seen, and it can seem like a lot when it's dispersed by the slipstream. This may be true but the airplane's just been through an oil change. That should prompt Phil to take a closer look at areas that were just worked on, such as drain plugs, filters, and servicing ports. 
Phil and Val work really well together. They manage the challenge and response checklists, and Val handles the radios while Phil flies. Everything goes smoothly until we come to the engine failure. When humans are startled, we may react in ways that are not helpful. We can also take up to five seconds to process what's going on and to do something constructive about it. That's a long time when the situation is rapidly deteriorating. Without getting too technical, for those of you that aren't multi-engine rated yet, when one engine quits on a multi-engine airplane, the plane will yaw and roll toward the failed engine. If the good engine is developing enough power, the flight controls may not be able to overcome the yawing and rolling tendency. The slower you're going, and the more power you have on the good engine, the greater the difficulty of keeping control. Phil's problem occurred at the worst possible time, on climb out with full power on the good engine. I know it's counterintuitive, but the only way to regain control of the situation is to lower the nose and reduce power on the good engine. Phil's response came late, but in the end he did the right thing and a classic light twin accident was avoided. If you're always thinking ahead, there are few times when you have to act immediately. Power loss on takeoff and climb out in any aircraft is certainly one of those times where you absolutely have to do the right thing right now. That makes a compelling case for recurrent training. In fact, many insurance policies require recurrent training for pilots of multi-engine airplanes. Whether or not it's required for your airplane or operation, recurrent training is a good idea, and you can document it in the Fast Team Wings Proficiency Program. Check it out at faasafety.gov. And be sure to stay tuned for Chapter 4 of our story.